The Bad Old Woman in Black by Lord Dunsany. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Bad Old Woman in Black ran down the street of the ox butchers. Windows at once were opened high up in those crazy gables. Heads were thrust out. It was she. Then there arose the council of anxious voices, calling sideways from window to window or across to opposite houses. Why was she there with her sequins and bugles and old black gown? Why had she left her dreaded house? On what fell errand she hasted? They watched her lean, lithe figure, and the wind in that old black dress, and soon she was gone from the cobbled street, and under the town's high gateway. She turned at once to her right, and was hid from the view of the houses. Then they all ran down to their doors, and small groups formed on the pavement, and they took counsel together, the eldest speaking first. Of what they had seen, they said nothing, for there was no doubt it was she, it was of the future they spoke, and the future only. In what notorious thing would her errand end? What gains had tempted her from her fearful home? What brilliant but sinful scheme had her genius planned? Above all, what future evil did this portend? Thus, at first it was only questions, and then the old grey beards spoke, each one to a little group. They had seen her out before, had known her when she was younger, and had noted the evil things that had followed her goings. The small groups listened well to their low and earnest voices. No one asked questions now, or guessed at her infamous errand, but listened only to the wise old men who knew the things that had been, and who told the younger men of the dooms that had come before. Nobody knew how many times she had left her dreaded house, but the oldest recounted all the times that they knew, and the way she had gone each time, and the doom that had followed her going, and two could remember the earthquake that there was in the street of the shearers. So were there many tales of the times that were, told on the pavement near the old green doors by the edge of the cobbled street, and the experience that the aged men had bought with their white hairs might be had cheap by the young but from all their experience only this was clear, that never twice in their lives had she done the same infamous thing, and that the same calamity twice had never followed her goings. Therefore it seemed that means were doubtful and few for finding out what thing was about to befall, and an ominous feeling of gloom came down on the street of the ox-butchers and in the gloom grew fears of the very worst. This comfort they only had when they put their fear into words, that the doom that followed her goings had never yet been anticipated. One feared that with magic she meant to move the moon, and he would have damned the high tide on the neighboring coast, knowing that as the moon attracted the sea, the sea must attract the moon, and hoping by his device to humble her spells. Another would have fetched iron bars and clamped them across the street, remembering the earthquake there was in the street of the shearers. Another would have honored his household gods, the little cat-faced idols seated above his hearth, gods to whom magic was no unusual thing, and, having paid their fees and honoured them well, would have put the whole case before them. His scheme found favour with many, and yet at last was rejected, 
for others ran indoors, and brought out their gods too to be honoured, till there was a herd of gods all seated there on the pavement. Yet would they have honoured them, and put their case before them, but that a fat man ran up last of all, carefully holding under a reverent arm his own two hound-faced gods, though he knew well, as indeed all men must, that they were notoriously at war with the little cat-faced idols. And although the animosities natural to faith had been lulled by the crisis, yet a look of anger had come into the cat-like faces that no one dared disregard, and all perceived that if they stayed a moment longer there would be a flaming round from the jealousy of the gods. So each man hastily took his idols home, leaving the fat man insisting that his hound-faced gods should be honoured. Then there were schemes again, and voices raised in debate, and many new dangers feared, and new plans made. But in the end they made no defence against danger, for they knew not what it would be, but wrote upon parchment as a warning, in order that all might know. The bad old woman in black ran down the street of the ox-butchers. End of The Bad Old Woman in Black by Lord Dunsany